So I will be reading in Matthew 28. I'll be basing off of 18 to 20, but I wanted to read the whole thing. And it is New Living Translation. And you guys can join me in standing for the reading of his word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it reads, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You guys can be seated. So without a doubt, we know that when following him, he transforms us and he changes us. And we have been coming and seeing that we are called to testify. Sunday, Pastor Ray brought up uh, some great points and I just wrote some down. And the first one that I got was sometimes we resist. The second time I got, I wrote down, his undeniable glory would cause anyone to bow down. Third, I wrote down, when it is God who is doing it, there is no denying it. Fourth, I wrote down, some of us walk around forgetting who we have received deliverance from. And fifth, that was like my, my stopping point. And pastor brought up how God has so much authority in his name. And he talked about when Jesus was sleeping on the boat and they were all looking at him like, why are you sleeping on the boat? And I'm just going to read that little portion of the Bible. And it's Mark 4, 35 to 41. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. <laughs> the disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care? We're going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, three words, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. And just to, you know, see how great is his authority that he has in his name. That he just has to say three words and literally the storm stops. The waters stop. Everything just submits to his name. And when you think of a child or a friend, you ask them for a favor, immediately then they think of, why do I have to do this right now? They may not tell you, but they're probably thinking it because I've been that friend, to be honest. Um, they're probably thinking of, you ask a child to wash the dishes, they're probably like, I don't want to wash the dishes right now. They question it every moment. But when God speaks, he uses three words and his authority is so great that it just happens. It, there's no doubting it. I want to invite you guys to think of a time where you followed around an older sibling, uh, an older parent, an older friend, anything like that. Um, when I was younger, I followed around my older sister a lot. It was kind of weird. I'm sure my dad did not appreciate it. But wherever she was, I wanted to be. Whatever she was laughing at, I wanted to laugh at. Whatever she was wearing, I wanted to wear. And my dad made it happen every single time, which I am happy for. But the definition of, follow of a follower is an adherent or devotee of a particular person, cause, or activity. And I don't know about you guys, but when reading a certain part of the text, I always gravitate to one part of it. And it's usually always the part that speaks about me. And you're probably like, they didn't say your name in the verse, Abby, but I thought of verse 20. 
it was my favorite, that little part at the end. And it reads, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's a promise that he made me, Abby, there. So that's where I went to. And when I read it in my mind, it translated to, I am with Abby always to the end of the age. I want us to go back to thinking about that older sibling that we used to follow around and just do whatever they were doing with. Did you guys ever consider the actions that they were doing when you were following them around? Not at all, me either. My sister almost got into a fight one time and my dad, a Latino Dominican man, wanted to punish her and I stood in front of my dad crying, saying no, don't hit my sister. But I, didn't, I never stopped to consider the things she was doing when I was following her. And God brought me back to read the text again. And he said to me, Yes, you are my beloved princess. Yes, I am with you always. Yes, I will leave the 99 for one. But remember, I have a other herd of sheep that is following me as well. And when he spoke to me, it was kind of like a, a check yourself moment. And that check yourself moment was, he said to me, you skip the mission, the whole mission. And he said, matter of fact, that's the title. It's at the top. It says the great mission. You skip the whole, miss it, the whole mission. Sometimes we just think about ourselves and our own actions and our own satisfaction because I was just following around my sister for fun. It was fun to me, but I didn't think of her actions and where they would lead me to eventually. I could have got a little pow pow that day too, but I didn't think of that because I was just so focused on what I was doing and what was good for me in that moment. And God calls us to testify and the mission is to testify. And we are walking testimonies of his love, of his greatness, of his faithfulness. And sometimes people are walking behind us and we don't notice our actions or what we're doing or where we're leading them to. We are, again, walking testimonies. He commands us to also baptize them have you spoken to anybody about his love, his faithfulness? He also commands us to obey for we obey and those also following us would obey as well. Those other disciples. Now, I don't know about you. When I began to obey, I felt this like peace. Although it's not what I wanted to do, but it's just... It puts your mind that so much ease knowing that you obeyed and you know God has it all together and his ways are not your ways and it just works out that way. And I brought myself to think of the definition of a disciple. And a disciple is a personal follower of Jesus during his life. And if you ask me, he is still alive. He resurrected the third day. So yes, of his life, we're still following Jesus in his life. And um, it brought me to think of Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. We follow him and oftentimes we forget who we're following. That same God with the authority that said three words and said, be still. He said, silence and be still. There's other people that we love around us, family, friends, that also need to partake in God's faithfulness, that also need to pick up their cross and just follow him. Then I thought of Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. We are all delivered. We are all redeemed. We are all walking testimonies. We are all his masterpiece. I encourage you to begin to not just think of yourself, but to be, think of others around you who are also his masterpiece, who are also his workmanship, who also deserve the chance and will get that chance to not walk in darkness, but eventually walk in light with him. So that's one of the main things I encourage you to do is to speak on, to tell others what God has done for you because it shouldn't just end with just you. His love and his mercy extends to everyone. He gives you grace and mercy every day. He does it for others too. 
we just want them to, you know, tap into it a little bit and just experience his goodness. I'm going to meet, read, sorry, Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but what is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. John 8, 12 reads, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. Follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Again, we walk, we think of ourselves and we forget and we don't tell other people the good things that God has done for us and they're just walking behind us in darkness and dim when we hold a light that attracts people to want to walk to him when the good things that he's done for us others should know so that they can walk with him as well yes it was short <laughs> but I have a couple questions in closing first one are we mindful of our actions? Second one, is what we say around others speaking on God's faithfulness? Because yes, he has delivered you, but sometimes we walk around defeated and that's not okay. Is how we move attesting to the deliverance he has given us? Are you actually keeping up with his commandments? Are you actually being that walking testimony, that positive one that people need to see? Four, do we notice, recognize others looking at us? And five, the last one, are we seeing a need in others while we hold the key to that has saved us already, that has gave us life and everlasting and keeping it for ourselves. I don't know about you, I've been transformed, I've been changed. Who I used to be is not who I am right now. And I would love for everyone else, my family, my siblings, my father, my cousins, my coworkers to just experience or just to taste and see that he is good, to feel the saltiness that he gives us, the salt that we provide the earth and see that they can also feel that same way that their circumstance can change just like mine has, that their life can go literally from negative to positive because if you ask me, I used to be a very negative person, but now I just see him and it changes everything. I pick up my cross and I follow him and yes, I have my moments where it hurts and yes, we all sit here and have our moments where we wanna let it go and we wanna stop following him and we wanna stay and not move. But again, knowing the God, I'm not going to say man, because knowing the God that we are following, it changes it all, literally. It changes it all. Knowing that he just has to say three words and the storm is just silenced. The storm just goes away. It's just amazing. And I'm just, I just want to read uh, Matthew 28. 18 to 20, and it reads again, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. The Bible is for everyone. Now reading it again, it's for everyone. Be sure of this. I am with you always. I am with Ivy. I am with Noemi. I am with Ilka. I am with Claribel. I am with Josue. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now I'm just going to pray to end. 
Father, we thank you because you are with each and every one of us always to the end of the age, my God. Forgive us if we thought it was just about us. Forgive us if we thought it was just us who needed to be redeemed. Forgive us if we thought it was just us who needed to be saved, my God. For you have given us a mission and it's called the Great Commission for a reason, my God, because other needs to see your faithfulness, your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Others need to tap into that as well, my God. There are other people who need deliverance, my God. There are other people who need their chains to be broken as well, my Lord Jesus. So right now, my God, make us, help us become those walking testimonies that you have called us to be, my God. Help us to be followers of you and only you and help us to recognize who we are following, my Lord Jesus. For your name has so much authority. There's nothing to question about that ever, my God. So we thank you, my God, because truly, 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 your faithfulness is so great, my Lord Jesus. And help us to testify of your love, my God. Your love that has changed all of us. Your love that has caused us to become the salt of the earth. Your love that has us in the light, finally, where we can breathe, where we can see, my God. Your love that took us out of the darkness and has us on a hilltop, on a mountaintop. Help us not be ashamed of your love. Help us not be ashamed that you have changed us. Help us not be ashamed that you have transformed us. And help us to be cautious of others who are watching us. And help us lead them to you, my God, because that is what you have called us to do, my Lord Jesus. So, Father, again, I pray that you have your way in each and every single one of us, my God. Have your way in everyone in our workplaces, in our homes, my Lord Jesus, our families, Lord God. Even when we step on the train or a, a bus or anything like that, my God, may one person see the light through a smile, through a God bless you, through a God loves you. Because you truly do love each and every single one of us, Lord God. Above all things, my God, have your way, my God. May we obey your commands may we obey the mission that you have given us to testify my lord jesus i pray all these things in that name that has so much authority that name that holds so much power that name that transforms and penetrates the deepest parts of our souls and our bodies my god i pray all these things in that name that great I am name, that great name that has all authority on earth, in heaven, every single where, unquestionably. In your holy name I pray, amen.